Welcome back to another exciting installment of Synth Secrets, uh, our exploration of synthesis on Zoya. Um, in the first session, and again, this isn't a series, but these two are pretty connected. In the first session, we discussed ping filters, which was the idea of using uh, an exciter, which is just a burst of noise to excite uh, or ping a resonant filter. Today we're going to talk about modal synthesis, which is pretty much the same idea but on steroids. It's like the big brother of the pinged filter. So we might hear some similar tonalities, but the difference between modal synthesis and, and a simple pinged filter is your ability to shape the, the timbre in ways that you can't with just a, a simple uh, pinged filter. So to quickly run through the setup and what's going on here is that we have once again an exciter section made up of a noise source and a sawtooth wave that are going into a switch so I can just switch back and forth between them. Those go into a VCA which is controlled by an ADSR, uh, which is triggered by the trigger output of my keyboard module here, but you could use a trigger output from a MIDI uh, note in or a gate. The important thing to keep in mind is that this ADSR or simple attack decay envelope is set to immediate release off so that it's a triggered envelope rather than one that is controlled by the gate or how long you hold down a key. Uh, and that ADSR again, I'm using a multiplier here. Uh, so I've put the output of the ADSR into both inputs of this multiplier just so I <coughs> have a more exponential rise to the envelope. And the VCA, the output of the VCA, and again, the, it's just a means of controlling these snippets of noise that we send. Instead of going to one filter, and this is where modal synthesis diverges from just a simple ping filter, I'm sending it into five, five bandpass filters. And I'm sending the output of the keyboard module into each of those bandpass filters uh, frequency inputs. So again, like in the last video, we're, we're really playing the filter frequency here. Uh, but for four of these filters, I've added an additional value module so that I can deviate the frequency from that fundamental. And what I'm doing when I uh, change the frequency of, of these additional filters is uh, really what modal synthesis is about. Uh, I'm adding partials, which is a term you may have seen in, you know, other synthesizer videos or, or other manuals. It used to be more common than it is today. But a partial is what it sounds like. It's part of a sound. Um, and when we have more filters, we have more parts to that sound. So the complexity of the sound we can create increases. Uh, and, and that's what's happening here. This sounds a lot like the ping filters we made last week, but we can mess around with the frequencies, uh, and get something that sounds very different. Right? There's more um, control over the, the timbre uh, than... in the simple ping filter, more complexity to the sound because we have more parts to work with. Uh, so I've connected a, a value module 
to the resonance input of all of these so I can control the sort of attack or uh, sorry the decay of the filters and that's really the uh, appeal of modal synthesis. It's clearly not as simple to dial in as the pinged filter. Uh, there's more complexity here, but you also get more complexity in how you can shape the, the tonality of what you're doing. And if we mess around with our exciter, I'm going to switch it to the sawtooth wave. we can get different results yet again because we're exciting a different structure. So the idea behind both of these is that they're trying to, to mimic the way in which physical objects resonate. Uh, and most physical objects resonate at multiple frequencies. So this is where the modal synthesis part comes in. Uh, and by changing these partials in their relationship to the fundamental, we can change uh, how they sound when they're all put together. This is sort of a, a basic principle of, of like sound design at the oscillator level is that really every sound can be decomposed into sine waves. Uh, and so modal synthesis is sort of a a cousin of additive synthesis, if you've ever come across that, which generally is you is created using only sine waves. Here we are using these resonating filters, which act as sine waves again, but we're taking advantage of the decay that they have. Uh, additive synthesis is even more complicated because you have different decay structures for each of these sine waves. So again, we're in the sort of bell-like tuned percussion arena. Um, but you can get things that are not just struck, but kind of scraped. All I'm doing here is changing the, the envelope of my exciter and the resonance of all of the filters. Let's try that with some noise. So if you've done a pinged filter, Moving on to modal synthesis is a pretty easy step because you're really just taking something that you've already done and doing it some more. <laughs> um, but if you really want to get into it, you can add many more partials. Um, the more partials you add, the more control you have over the timbre of the sound that you create. And if you want to get really granular with it, you can start shaping those partials in, you know, here I'm using one control uh, to control the resonance of each of these partials. I'm using uh, one connection strength to connect to all of them, but you could put a VCA after the partials and control the amplitude of each one. You could control the resonance of each one. And in doing that, you can get some really, really lifelike, uh, you know, struck and, and bowed sounds out of this method. So in the simple form, it's a nice way to make, I think, uh, something that sounds a little bit more complex, a little bit more realistic, a little bit more striking uh, than a simple pinged filter for this sort of tone. Um, at the same time, if you want to get really granular with it, there are ways to do that. 